let's go ahead and get started. Um, welcome, everybody. It's Hello. Wednesday. Happy birthday, Mr. Dan Tippy. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's go ahead and start with our Pledge of Allegiance. And then um, feel free to mute your microphone or you can leave it live if you prefer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one mm -hmm. nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Dan, would you give invocation for us today? Yes, happy to. Thank you. Father, we thank you for so many things today. Our country, uh, though we're in the midst of uh, uh, what many would call turmoil, you're in control. We thank you for your many blessings and we remember today our veterans um, and their, uh, their gifts, um, their willingness uh, to put their lives on the line for us. Uh, and we thank you for caregivers and those in our community, uh, Lord, that again, on a daily basis are uh, giving of themselves. We thank you now for the time together the many blessings. Thank you again for my granddaughter's uh, amazing uh, results from her bone marrow transplant. We thank you for all the rest of the families this morning, Lord, that uh, need your touch. And we ask now you'd be in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. So, yes. Happy Veterans Day, everybody. I am at home today because it is a federal holiday. So, welcome. Um, so for our veterans, I do want to acknowledge and say thank you. Um, and thank you, Carl, for putting that in our weekly agenda. Um, we have quite a few veterans in our midst. We've got uh, John Bruce from the Army, Ed Clark, Air Force, Ann Graham, Navy, John Hodecker was also in the Army, Dick Kuhn, Air Force, Gary Olorenshaw was Army, Mr. Carl Vertries, Navy, Roland White in the Air Force. Do we have anybody else who's a veteran that we haven't listed? I think we're good. Okay. All right. So our guest today, our speaker is going to be Melissa Romo. Thank you, Melissa, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Of course. All right. Do we have any announcements for today? Dan. Yes, I've got two announcements. Uh, this Friday is our day for November to serve at Jericho Table. So is anyone interested in serving? Okay, if you are, let me know. Um, and then my second announcement is about bell ringing. So our day to help the Salvation <laughs> Army bell ringing, and uh, I see Michelle's there helping out, uh, will be Saturday, December 19th. So put that on your calendars. Uh, Michelle will be sending uh, out a notice for signing up. Uh, that's good. Um, Salvation Army asked us if we could try and have people at four locations, uh, Fred Meyer, Safeway, Bymart, and uh, Walmart. And they asked us if we could do one door at each. So one door, Fred Meyer, and one at Walmart. They asked if we had enough people, we could try and do a second door at Fred Meyer. Uh, but we'll see if we get enough uh, people to help fill out those slots. Uh, certainly, we'll have uh, some suggestions for all you volunteers about being safe uh, in the time of COVID here. And just a thought, if it, there'll be uh, two people as a good crew, but we don't want to bring together two people that have not been uh, in a safe group with each other. So we'll try and... Uh, give suggestions to be safe as we do that. Uh, more details to follow. Perfect, sounds good, thank you. Like, I'd just like to add, I'll be sending it out the uh, volunteer spreadsheet today. I'm, um, I just had Olivia figure, help me figure out Google Docs, so it'll be a shareable file. Um, and so that should be, you, you'll you probably get it by the end of this meeting. And um, if we have key clubbers, uh, we've already been a, a, um, a um, contacted by the Ridgeview Key Club, and I know the Redmond Key Club meant this week. If we have key clubbers, I believe, um, Roland, you said that 
we need to have at least a one Kiwanis with member with them um, available to them if they are going to volunteer for this project. So keep that in mind as you're looking at the sheet. And if you see a key clever, um, um, just that we definitely need to make sure those um, those are filled first. So. Okay, and also Rotary has agreed to possibly help supplement some people as well. They're really itching to get back out there in the community and do some service hours. So um, once we've got some time slots, I might send that over to them and see if they've got anybody that's interested as well. The more hands, the better. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Hannah, you're on mute. Thank you. Um, I would like to announce that there's a work party on Saturday, November 21, November 21, from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock at the C's pop-up store, formerly Sears. And we, I'll send out an email with details of what to bring and what we'll do. I missed the date of the bell ring because we have a gas emergency and there's a guy downstairs working on it. What was the date of the bell ring? December 19th, on Saturday the 19th. Thank you. And also the ordering online is live. We got our first online order and we need to get it to Antelope, Oregon. <laughs> So anyway, that's my announcement. <laughs> All right, very good. Earl. A uh, couple of things. <laughs> Number one, uh, I just supported an idea about using the key clubbers. I had a conversation through email with them to, uh, this week, and they're looking for some things to do, so they this might fall right into their bailiwick. Uh, secondly, uh, just an update on the bag program for the uh, Redmond Food Project. Uh, the order's been put in, uh, and uh, they should get here our bags that the Qantas Food Project, uh, Redmond Qantas Food Project, should get here just before or just after Thanksgiving. If you have some green bags, pass them out. We'll collect them, uh, turn them in uh, on the uh, 12th of December with uh, a regular process. I will get anybody who wants bags that they want us on them as soon as I get them. So I'm hoping that uh, people who uh, have in the past uh, taken part in this food project will continue to do so. We'll get those bags to you. And uh, after we get the, the startup, it should, should be a whole lot more clean than it has been. But it will be uh, right after Thanksgiving, I'm assuming, when I will get the bags delivered to me. So if you want a bag, let me know, and I'll get it to you uh, probably by the 1st of December. Uh, All right. Very good. I, 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 that's it. OK. All right. Any other announcements? Hi. OK. My name is Olivia. I'm a member of the Redmond Key Club. I just wanted to let you guys know that we are currently in the works of starting up a project from last year. It's where we collect different items to give to teens and exiting the foster care system. And I'll let you know if anything changes. Perfect. Thank you, Olivia. All right, I've got a couple announcements myself. Um, you may have seen it in the agenda that Carl sent out, but we're looking for volunteer hours. So remember if you've volunteered, even if you're not sure if it qualifies, send it to Carl. He will vet those and get our volunteer hours reported to Kiwanis International. Um, the more, the better. And then also for our fire relief challenge, um, we have donated so far $575. All of those funds are matched. So we are still $425 away from our goal. And just a, a reminder that Mid-Oregon Credit Union is going to be matching our funds up to that thousand. So we've still got $425 sitting on the table, free money. So if anybody is still looking to help out with that challenge, we still have a bit to go. And then um, just the final announcement, we've got November board meeting next Tuesday on the 17th at noon. If you want to attend, everybody is welcome. Just let, um, let Dave know and he'll get you an invite to that Zoom meeting as well. 
Okay. All right. So I know this is the part that you guys always tune in for, but our joke of the day, uh, little Johnny was attending a birthday party for a classmate when the classmate's mother asked, Johnny, does your mother allow you to have two pieces of cake when you're at home? He replies, no, ma'am. And she says, well, do you think she'd like for you to have two pieces of cake here? And little Johnny replied confidently, she wouldn't care. It's not her cake. <laughs> All right, Melissa, <laughs> take it away for us, please. Hello. Thank you for having me. My name is Melissa and I am with Central Oregon Autism Movement. I am the executive director and founder. And um, I guess a little bit about us. Um, we're a local based nonprofit here in Redmond and we provide services to children and adults with autism. Um, some of our services include a, sim a sensory and safety program where we um, give equipment to families in need like iPads and sensory items and safety items. Um, we provide support and resources and um, have a support group that meets regularly. And yeah, that's kind of, I have a, we have an autism walk that we hold annually and we're on our seventh year. Um, I was with another community partner out of um, Portland for six years and volunteered as one of their local chapter reps for Redmond and all of Deschutes County. And I decided a year ago that I wanted to venture off and make more of a local based on profit for just our community and our area. And so I started Central Oregon Autism Movement. Hi, Melissa, it's Penny, thanks for joining us. Um, thanks for can you just me. tell us a little bit about how many people you serve in the Central Oregon area and oh, the Redmond area? Yeah, between 100 to 200 right now. It kind of varies like some months, sometimes it'll be more and sometimes it'll be less. It just really kind of depends. Great. And how do you um, select your participants? How do people know about you guys? Um, through Facebook, um, Instagram. Um, we're also connected with the Shoots County Disability Services and CODSN and stuff like that. So that's how I get in through our website. That's how we get a lot of our information out. Great, and can you tell us a little bit about how, you know, you guys um, fundraise for your organization and if there's anything that, you know, perhaps Kiwanis um, might be able to get involved or, um, yeah. Yeah, one of our biggest, opportunities. yeah, one of our biggest fundraisers right now is the Autism Walk and that brings in a huge amount of our revenue. Um, and due to COVID this year, it was a little bit lower than it has been in the past years. We did continue and go ahead and have the walk in August. And we had a good turnout COVID, with COVID and everything. I was actually really surprised how many people came out and participated with us. Um, we usually have about five to 600 people that come out and we had about two to three this year. So, but we had it spread out. We had different time periods for people to come out and participate to kind of keep the traffic down and that kind of thing. And then other than that, just little fundraisers here and there like bounce events like at the mountain air and just little bitty I have some Walmart volunteers that are also um their children are involved in the organization and they help bring in funds by volunteering at our swim events and different things that we do so we're very limited on funding and could use more <laughs> to expand our resources I, could you give us a little more uh, information about what you do with the kids? And I know you said you fund the iPad. Are other things that you do? Or in terms yeah, of we actually, we host a sens uh, sensory-friendly autism um, swim event here in Redmond at Cascade Swim Center once a month. And we bring like the family, like our own private event. And we bring the families and kids in to like communicate and get to know other people and kind of just like a family connection where they can be them and enjoy activities in the community. Um, we also have a, uh, we just had a chunk of treat, a social distance chunk of treat at the VFW here in Redmond this past in October. Another great way for the kids and families to come out for, and adults, cause there's adults with intellectual disabilities that still require some of the younger activities too. So it brings those them in too and, um, 
one of the things that we're working on right now is I'm get, we're working on doing a Christmas program this year where we're gonna we're putting up a Christmas tree with wishes and we're letting the kids and uh, make a wish and put it on the tree and we're gonna try to grant those wishes for the holidays. How many people are involved in your program? Adults, uh, people like yourself who are working with. So the, far, the there's about two to three hundred in my newsletter, like in my network, but it's expanding. Like by the day, it keeps getting more and more and more. The more my name gets out there, the more I'm blowing up. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and how do um, how do people get a hold of you, or you know, if they wanted to make a donation? Um, there is a, I have, we have a link on the website for donations. Um, and we also have an Amazon wish list um, attached to our donation link. You can also um, mail in um, a donation. And the, I don't have my address handy, but I can get that for you. Um, and then, yeah, so just through my website and um, through uh, check through mail. Great, thanks so much. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? I'm sorry, I'm a little bit late here, but uh, I apologize. How many kids or people are you serving at the moment? Do you know? Between two to 300. Oh my goodness, okay. And that's just Central Oregon? Yes. Okay. What's an example of sensory or safety equipment that's used or needed? Uh, so, um, swings like medical grades like swings that they can swing like use to regulate and have sensory um sensory balls um oh gosh tr mini trampolines for the house um alarms that like this is getting into the safety stuff alarm systems that can be used in inside your home to like keep safety to keep um aware um door locks cabinet locks like all, just all the um, things that keep them safe. iPads, we've, I've donated just in the last year, three iPads to three different families that needed communication devices for their kids. Um, that's actually one of the really big things that I'm working on getting more and more resources and support for because those little things are big things for these families. Um, and there's not a lot of resources out there to provide those extra items. And now with COVID, people are really struggling to provide those things for their kids. You, you talk about iPads. What, what about uh, laptops? Do you, yeah, uh, we can use laptops too. Okay. Do you coordinate with the schools and, and what ages are the, uh, the youngest that you deal with? Um, the youngest I have right now is like two, so very little, two to, right now I've got some that it's like two to 18 right now. And then I have some adults that have been filtering in over the last month and a half. So, and I have at least a good like five to 20 um, adults that we're serving right now. How about the schools? Do you work with them at all? I haven't started now. They're, they know who I am and I've done... Last year before COVID, I did, I, um, I partnered with them on um, a workshop. Good. Yeah. So there are Melissa, are you aware of the Kiwanis camp? What now? Are you aware of the Kiwanis camp? I'm not. It is a camp for handicapped youngsters, including our kids with autism. It goes up uh, on Mountain Hood uh, in the uh, summer. Awesome. And uh, that might be a place to look, as a place for kids to go. Uh, Kiwanis spends uh, a good deal of time up there. Okay, thank you for that information. Well, thank you, we appreciate it. All right, any other questions before we wrap up for today? 
All right. I believe that's it. Thank you again, Melissa. We appreciate having you. And it's thank you for having me. It's always great to hear about all those resources available in our community. It seems like we've got so many out there, but yet, you know, so much is still needed. So, you know, we definitely appreciate the support that you provide those kiddos and, and those people in need. I appreciate so. you having me and listening. Of course. All right. So we're just going to end with the thought for the day. It's a short one today. Fortune favors the brave from Virgil. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day. All right. We'll see you Tuesday at the board meeting.